Call of Duty World War II is one of the Call of Duty games we've really wanted to talk about on this channel for a long time because it's really unique in its own way. It broke a lot of boundaries that Call of Duty had kind of set in place in past years and also may have had one of the most unique development cycles we've ever seen out of Call of Duty. But with all of that considered, how does this game, more importantly, hold up in 2019? Well, today Luke and I are going to take a look back at Call of Duty World War II. COD World War II was the second Call of Duty game developed by Sledgehammer Games, a part of a three-year cycle that Activision introduced shortly after Modern Warfare 3 was initially released. And Advanced Warfare actually released to really great acclaim and was praised for the new innovation to the movement system in that game. It really seemed like a turning point for the Call of Duty franchise as the new advanced movement would become the norm for the next couple of years. And it seemed like Activision and Sledgehammer Games believed in the advanced movement so much that that at the end of Advanced Warfare, it heavily implied that there would be a sequel to this game. But it seems like over the years, things started to change. When Black Ops 3 released, even with the refined movement, fans were starting to get worn out of the advanced movement and really wanted to go back to typical boots on the ground. Yet Activision doubled down with Infinite Warfare, having another advanced movement game taking place in a futuristic setting. This led to one of the most unpopular Call of Duty reveal trailers of all time, and while there's no confirmation on this, we think that right around the time of the Infinite Warfare release trailer, 15 months before the release of Call of Duty World War II, Activision did some major shuffling around with their projects and made Sledgehammer Games completely pivot whatever they were working on to a more classic boots on the ground Call of Duty experience that would maybe bring lost players back to the franchise. Like we said, we have no real confirmation of this, but if this was true, that would mean that a game that typically would have three complete years for development would be narrowed down to just 15 months, which would be closer to some of the older Call of Duty games. And it could also explain why Raven Software had to jump in and develop the new war game mode, and also be completely in charge of the port for the PC version of the game. And of course, even with that, there was much more evidence to this game not having nearly as much development time with the fact that the game launched with only nine multiplayer maps, and the campaign was relatively short, especially compared to other Call of Duty campaigns. Still, Activision went all in with Mark marketing this game as a return to the classic Call of Duty experience, with boots on the ground gameplay being a staple in this new game, and the return to World War II since the first time in Call of Duty history, all the way since Call of Duty World at War. Which mind you guys, Call of Duty World at War was one of our favorite Call of Duty games back in the day, so we were really excited to finally see a return to this era. And even more so from the trailers of the game, it really looked like Activision was trying to develop a cinematic story telling experience that was much grander in scale than the other stories that were normally attached to Call of Duty, which is almost ironic because they completely did away with a story after this, and nonetheless we were excited to see what they decided to do with this storytelling experience. And honestly, as a whole, the Call of Duty World War II campaign provides a very inconsistent gaming experience. That might sound kind of confusing, but for instance, in some parts of the story, it's a really great storytelling game that is immersive and has in-depth characters that you almost care about and you can relate to in some way or another, but then at other times you notice that the game has some really out-of-touch parts involved with it, where it just seems either over the top, like the whole train derailment scene, or just the overall pacing feels really odd at times. There are beautiful visuals in this campaign, and the new mechanics with your squad mates each having their own role is actually really cool. The locations are are all interesting, and the combat are more or less the same as what you would expect out of a Call of Duty game. The biggest complaint that we have with this game is that it felt like at no point whatsoever did the storytelling team at Sledgehammer Games know where they were going with the story. They developed the characters, they spent a lot of time developing an antagonistic character in your own squad, you have some moments where you see the horrors of war, and it all leads up to nothing. There really isn't a climactic finish to the game just everyone kind of parting ways at the end. And this criticism gets really heavy in the later part of the game where it was like they were trying to force some sort of epic ending to the game really doesn't lead up to anything and it ends up just leaving this really, really bizarre ending in the player's hands rather than a fulfilling ending. Remember in games like Call of Duty World at War, back before the cinematography or the movie type feel were the main points of Call of Duty games? The 
story was always deemed well because besides just following one character, it followed two different factions, and the story stayed generally simple. It was just this ongoing onslaught of being a soldier, constantly fighting through hellish conditions, and eventually succeeding no matter how insignificant it felt. You as your squad made it through the hardest conditions ever. Even the Russian storyline was really unique, where you push through some of the hardest conditions and claim the city. But with Call of Duty World War II, while they do a great job at adding depth to each character and making them each unique, we didn't really understand why or what the whole purpose of anything was. Like you push to claim some territory, you decide what to do with the group of hostages you find a few months later, there's this ongoing conflict between two of your commanding officers that you think's going to boil up to some sort of big ending and it never gets there, you have a bunch of flashbacks of your character who feels guilt for his brother's death because he didn't shoot a wolf, which is really a weird weakness to have considering he's killing all of these soldiers without any problem as you play through the campaign, but apparently that comes full circle more than some of the other plot elements. And then, oddly enough, some of the most interesting levels take place early on in the story and are easily forgotten about later in the story as it becomes more repetitive the further you get into the gameplay. These really interesting levels mostly involve the liberation of Paris, which was done really uniquely in a great storytelling manner of espionage and causing somewhat of an internal collapse from within before allied forces help take the city. These levels of stealth and deception were some of the high points of this game that really changed the way that Call of Duty storytelling has ever seen because it just focused on a completely unique strategy. It was really cool that you had to memorize your own identity and it would play a role later on in the level. This is what we wish we had more of because this was so new to what we've seen in Call of Duty and even if this was the finale of the game, it would have probably been a more satisfying ending than what we actually ended up getting. It's just a shame that you only really get one to two levels of this interesting storytelling before you're just back at the grind of being a soldier, shooting people, running up hills, taking hills, and the really, really rushed ending. Honestly, it felt like they were leading somewhere to this, but the story just kind of seems to be missing a third arc that maybe got jammed into one or two levels rather than being spanned out over the four to five levels it probably should have had. And honestly, the length of this campaign shows. It feels a lot shorter than some of the other campaigns you might have played in the past. Of course, they have lengthy cutscenes, which kind of inflates the time of the game overall, but it doesn't really change the fact that the game's kind of short. Okay, overall, maybe I'm nitpicking a little bit too much in this campaign. It is a Call of Duty World War II campaign through and through. It just doesn't have the same satisfying feel that Call of Duty stories have had in the past. Even some of the more recent ones that we've criticized, like Call of Duty Ghosts, which was extremely corny and almost a parody of itself, it still had somewhat of a full circle ending. Every plot development led into something else, and it came full circle where this just felt like a bunch of random ideas never really fully being thought out. If you're looking for a game that gives you an atmosphere of Call of Duty, and you just want to shoot some Nazis and play through a game that's fun, then this game will give you that experience, of course. But if you're looking for something that's a little more on par to what Call of Duty's done in the past, where for the most part, Call of Duty has a pretty solid track record of making decent campaigns. There's not one campaign that stands out as being absolutely awful, besides maybe Black Ops 3. But maybe we just wish they did a little bit more with this one, rather than what we actually got. And it could have been just because they were rushed in what they were doing. I mean, look at multiplayer, which Luke's about to talk about, where it launched with only nine maps. This game's multiplayer had a lot of issues when it first came out. Too few maps, as we already mentioned, spawns were messed up on those maps, tons of hackers, and the servers didn't work that well either. We originally played this game on PC and were beyond over this game after playing it for a good 40 hours right after launch. The issues with the PC version seem to be more persistent and Activision was slow as hell updating anything on PC, as seems to be the norm now. Our experience with this game was so bad that when we started our script for this review, we wanted to give it the lowest rating we ever had given any game. So since we only played the PC version and well, Black Ops 4 wasn't the bump either, maybe even worse, we did want to challenge our view a little bit at least and truly see if the multiplayer is more fun now. So we recently bought the Xbox version on sale. They apparently 
apparently only sell the console version with the first DLC pack now, at least in the Xbox store, which instantly helped the game since there is more maps. And you already know that one of our biggest problems with the game was the map selection or the lack thereof. And since they sell it this way now, it kind of prevented the maps from being dead. I remember in like Advanced Warfare, the DLC maps were instantly dead, nobody played them. So at least now that there's more people who own the Gold Edition and the first map pack, you can actually find more lobbies with the DLC maps. This quote unquote new standard version comes with 12 maps now instead of 9. Just to put it in perspective though, Modern Warfare 2 launched with 16 maps. A variety in maps is important if you want to keep an online game like this alive for a long time. And they clearly failed at this simple premise by launching the game with so little maps. Also, we are well aware that there's the war mode and it comes with 3 maps or 4 maps with the DLC pack. But that mode was also broken on launch and shouldn't be the reason we get less regular maps. It would have been nice as an extra little mode, but they put way too much focus on it. We still don't really feel like the war mode is all that great. And it's kinda ham-fisted in there as if Battlefield 1 was so successful and Activision got jealous and they just needed something similar. But having a small map pool itself wasn't the only issue with the multiplayer. Spawns were all messed up on most of the maps and there was connection issues all the time. They did fix some of it now. I didn't disconnect from any lobbies or had any connection issues on Xbox at least, but on PC it was still kind of wonky. But there's still maps like USS Texas that has a good three lane layout on the surface, but the spawns are still so bad that it just isn't fun. To be fair, this is a small map and there's only two real spawn areas areas on the map, but why don't they shift around? It seems like both enemy teams are on one side of this ship and the spawn just doesn't switch. And there was an issue on almost all of the maps and you only had 9 maps, so if most of them get destroyed by bad spawns, what are you gonna play? And in classic Activision fashion, the PC version got either no updates or they were really late. That has been an issue for a while now and it's still persistent in Black Ops 4. And while this doesn't influence our rating for the current version of the game, just to show how bad the launch of this was, the servers did not work on day one. and on on Xbox you couldn't even get into the campaign or Nazi zombies. And once you were actually able to connect, the multiplayer was just a laggy mess. And the biggest part about this multiplayer and what probably sold most people the game was the whole return to boots on the ground thing. And yes, we have to admit the return to the old playstyle felt kind of nice and so did the return to a World War II setting. And there's a ton of people who actually believed in boots on the ground and World War II being the right choice for Call of Duty and that reflected in sales. This game actually sold one fourth more than Infinite Warfare and Black Ops for. Nonetheless, there's something about this game that feels so forced. Like we said earlier, it doesn't feel like an organic return to the older mechanics and setting, and more like Activision folding to the fans' reaction to Infinite Warfare. Yes, listening to the fans is not a bad thing and they should definitely do that more, but then shifting plans and taking away development times and the end product therefore suffering just doesn't make it better. They have to understand that just returning to World War II and boots on the ground alone isn't gonna fix anything. One more thing about the multiplayer before we get into the zombies mode, this game does have loot boxes and while they aren't pushing them into your face too hard and you do actually get quite a few for free through playing, there are still loot boxes and instead of just being able to unlock or buy a skin you want, you have to gamble for it. And before anyone says, duh, it doesn't matter, it's just cosmetics, it does matter because loot boxes are just a tool designed to make you pay more money for things you want. I would be totally fine with paying $3 for a weapon skin I want, but with loot boxes you have to pay like 30 and then have to have luck to even get something you want within these $30. Loot boxes are never good for consumers, no matter if they're cosmetic only or not. And if you don't think that's true, you're kind of being played by the publishers wanting these loot boxes in all of their games now. Anyways, I could go on and on about loot boxes, but let's get into the zombies mode. Of course, this game had to have a zombie mode because World at War had one and that was the first game to do so and it was also a World War II game. And there was one full map that came with the base game. The final Reich is a large map with an above ground level and an underground level. There's a few easter eggs once again and the map is pretty good and the setting feels alright. But then again, we're not a big fan of like these levels that are just filled with easter eggs for the sake of easter eggs. I'd still rather play World at War or Black Ops Zombies. Black Ops 3 is probably still the most diverse choice for zombie fans anyways, especially on PC with all the mods and possibilities you have. Actually, there's one cool easter egg though on the Final Reich map that lets you unlock a co-op version of the tutorial map. And it's just basically a very small map set inside a farmhouse. We did mention this map in our hardest Call of Duty achievements video, since it's one of the more challenging maps to survive on for 
a long time because of the small size. And honestly though, it isn't a very good map, it's just kind of you can tell it's a recycled tutorial level and not really a map made for a full zombies playthrough. But since we did buy the resistance DLC on console, it also gave us access to the darkest shore, which is still a pretty good zombies map. This one has a very grim setting and I actually prefer it over the final Reich. And even though there's a ton of easter eggs again, there is some cool stuff you can do with them. But once again you gotta remember this game isn't made by Treyarch, who are famous for inventing the zombies mode. I do have to say that Treyarch still understands the zombie mode the best and what makes it fun. Nonetheless, for first time making the zombie mode after only having EXO survival in Advanced Warfare, I think they did a decent job. With all this said, we want to go ahead and actually give the game two different ratings for PC and console. On console, the gold edition that is usually on sale for $24 is a decent deal and we're gonna go ahead and give that version of the game a C. It's just a pretty average Call of Duty experience overall, so we think a C reflects that. For the PC version though, there's no such thing as a gold edition and honestly, there was still some connection issues when we tried it again for this review. The PC version therefore only gets a D plus from us. The regular on sale price for the PC edition is also $24, but you don't get the extra DLC with it. So on console, you'll always get more for your money. Which shows again that Activision doesn't give a damn about their PC community. So screw you Activision D plus it is. Nonetheless, we do have to say, at least for multiplayer, this is one of the top 5 most active Call of Duties right now on any platform. Not the greatest Call of Duty in history, but with the right circumstances it can be fun. So if you're interested in this game, buy the Gold Edition on console. Do not buy the PC version, we can't really recommend it. Maybe if you find it for under $10 at some point on a key site, but even then we can't fully recommend it. Generally, Black Ops 1, 2, 3, World at War and the Modern Warfare series are still so much more fun and still have pretty active communities across the board, especially on Xbox with the whole backwards compatibility. But that's it for today guys, let us know in the comments down below, did you enjoy Call of Duty World War 2? How do you feel about this game? Do you agree with us or not? We would like to hear your opinion. Anyways, make sure to subscribe to Rockets Love if you're new, turn on notifications if you haven't already and check out the videos on your screen right now. We'll see you next time with a brand new video.